April the 25th is the 61st day of a bloody war that Russia gains against Ukraine. The morning of April the 25th began with an air raid alert across the country. Soon it became known Russian troops shelled five railway stations in the central and western Ukraine. Five people were killed and 18 were injured. This was the consequence of missile strikes on the railroad junctions of Zhmerenka and Kozyatin in Vinnytsia region. Enemy missiles also struck in the Rivne region. The important railway station of Zdolbuniv was hit. Vitaly Kovel, head of the Rivne Regional Military Administration. Another rocket attack resulted in an explosion at the traction substation of the Krasna railway station in the Lviv region. A few hours later the fire was extinguished. There were no casualties. Luckily, there were no casualties in Korostin, Zhitomyr region. An explosion was heard there, next to the railway station. As a result of the bombardment, about 20 passenger trains were moving with delays. According to the head of Ukrainian Railways, Oleksandr Commission, it will take several months to restore the railway infrastructure. За всю історію війни це один з найтяжчих ударів нашого ворога. Це системний удар по п'яти станціях. Всі ці ракетні удари були протягом однієї години зроблені. І, на жаль, ми бачимо, що ворог продовжує системно бити залізничну інфраструктуру. The third mass grave was discovered near Mariupol. It is five kilometers from the city in the village of Stary Krim. As the planet satellite images show, the trenches are more than 200 meters long. The first of them were excavated on March the 24th, already after the village had been occupied by the Russists, Radio Liberty reports. We know about these mass graves because these fascists, I have no other words, involve the local population in burial for food. It's them who told us that they had to work hard to receive food and water. Now in Mariupol there is not enough humanitarian aid that they bring in so people are forced to do it. Meanwhile, the occupiers continue to disrupt the evacuation of civilians from Mariupol. And although the Russians claimed an allegedly open green corridor for people hiding from shelling at the Azovstal plant, Deputy Prime Minister Irina Voroshuk denied this information. It is important to understand that the humanitarian corridor is opened by the agreement of the two sides. The corridor, announced unilaterally, does not provide security, so, in fact, it is not a humanitarian corridor. They don't let people evacuate but deport them instead. According to Petro Andrushenko, advisor to the Mariupol city mayor on Easter, April the 24th, the occupiers took 149 Mariupol residents to Russia. 23 of them were children. Unsatisfying news also appears in Kherson, a region in the south of Ukraine. Occupiers have seized the building of Kherson's mayor's office, Mayor Igor Kolekhaev reported. Tonight, armed men entered the building of the Kherson city council, took the keys and replaced the guards with their own. I left at 1945. The Ukrainian flag was still over the city hall. The mayor promised to give more details later, and he added that he was staying with the community. Orphans in Kherson are in danger. This was reported by the Ukrainian Parliament Commissioner of Human Rights, Lyudmila Denisova. 58 orphans and children deprived of parental care have been hiding in the basement of the local church for over a month. Ten of them are aged between four months and one year. The rest are under four years old, including children with disabilities who need special care and treatment. Denisova called for the urgent evacuation of the children and made sure that a safe place for them had already been found. The main thing is to open a humanitarian corridor. Russian invaders continue to shell the Kharkiv region. This is a region in the north of Ukraine that borders the aggressor's country. Residents of Dergachi and nearby villages suffered from the shelling of the occupiers. The Russians fired artillery at the streets and residential buildings. As a consequence, three civilians were killed, one person was injured. This was reported by the head of the Kharkiv Regional Military Administration, Oleg Sinehubov. Later, it was revealed that the shelling was carried out in the village of Zolochiv. 
A 72-year-old woman who was outside during the shelling was killed. Two other civilians were wounded. Eight residential buildings were damaged. Once again, the regional center of Kharkiv was also hit. The occupiers are shelling the local Saltivka district almost daily. This time a shell hit a 12-story building, a fire broke out. Rescuers extinguished the fire which engulfed the apartments on two floors. There were no dead. However, one resident was injured and hospitalized. Without electricity, water and gas, this is how the border Luhansk region now lives. The Russians de-energized a newly built electrical substation near the town of Kremina, temporarily occupied by the Russians. This was reported by the head of the Luhansk region, Serhii Haidai. Until today, the substation in Kremina has remained the only source of electricity supply to the homes of Luhansk residents. In the evening, a national TV news marathon broadcasted. Severodonetsk and its suburbs are already partially supplied with electricity. However, when asked by the presenter about other locations, Sergei Haidai said, Там настільки вже все розстріляно, що нема до чого просто приєднуватись, на жаль. Also, the head of the Luhansk region reported that almost the entire region was left without water and there are big problems with gas supply in Lysychansk due to an enemy shell hitting a gas pipeline. My world was destroyed by a Russian missile. This is how Yuri Glodan from Odessa describes his life today to BBC journalists. On April the 23rd, the eve of Easter, he lost his entire family to enemy shelling. His daughter Kira was only three months old. I was at the childbirth. I cried with happiness when our daughter was born. It's very hard for me now to realize that my daughter is gone, and my wife, and my mother-in-law. The man himself survived by a miracle. Before the shelling, he went out to the store, and when he returned, his apartment and his whole world had been destroyed by an enemy missile. In the burning house, the man found the bodies of his nearest and dearest. He and his wife Valeria had been together for nine years. He says she was a great mother and friend. She was perfect. You only meet someone like that once in a lifetime. And it's a gift from God. After the tragedy, Yuri returned to the destroyed house on Easter morning to salvage his wife's photo albums and handwritten notes. He says Valeria was a very talented writer. The man calls what happened to his family the grief of the entire civilized world. But he wants as many people as possible to know about it. On that day, April the 23rd, as a result of rocket fire, eight people were killed in Odessa. Де знайти безпечне місце, коли твоє рідне місто у блокаді? У звичайному житловому будинку? Ні. В лікарнях або в школах? Дітя, больниця, Маріуполь, роддом. Ні. В театрі. У самому серці міста? Далеко від будь-яких військових об'єктів. Так. Це хороша ідея. Можливо, ще якось попередити російських пілотів, що в театрі ховаються діти. Точно. Великими літерами. Російською мовою. Так ми точно будемо у безпеці. Якщо тільки вбивати наших дітей не є їхньою ціллю.